Aloha, my name is Dr. Stephanie Hahn, and today I'm going to talk to you a little bit about how reading bridges time and travels and intersects and how books and literature can give some sense of unity to our lives or um, and create a story in and of themselves. So uh, the fall or some some time between 1999 and 2001, I was living in Oakland, California. I was attending San Francisco State University to get my MA and I was working for first filing for the Oakland Tribune for the feature section and later I was working for Net Noir, the very first African American online presence. Um, at this time I was writing and um, just thinking about what I should be focusing on in terms of my manuscript. It was a time that was quite productive in terms of how I was rethinking the world and my place in it. In any event, I had a landlord and his name was B. Wayne Daniels, Bobby Wayne Daniels. He was this very eloquent black man. Um, he was from the South. He had made a life in uh, the Bay Area he was a property owner, and um, I found out later, he revealed to me, he, he showed up one day with a bunch of these literary journals. Here it is, it's the Yardbird Reader. And um, he was the businessman of this, of this literary journal, and it was put out by Ishmael Reed, and uh, this in particular was uh, an edition that was dedicated to Asian Americans that was edited by Shan Wong and Frank Chin. And I was so thrilled that he uh, gave me copies of this. Uh, mind you, at this time, they were already 25 years old by the time he, he gave me some issues of this Yardboard Raider. And um, it was the first multicultural literary journal in the United States that is known or recorded. And um, I took this literary journal and the stack of them, small stack of them, I'm not even sure if I have all of them anymore. And I, they made their way to Memphis, to Hong Kong, to Los Angeles, to different, back to Hong Kong. And finally, they're here with me in Honolulu, Hawaii. During the time when I was in Hong Kong, um, I was writing my dissertation on Asian American literary aesthetics and I happened to even use this literary journal in part of my dissertation as an example of the first multicultural literary journal. And it happened at the time that Sean Wong was coming through Hong Kong because he was part of the, the now defunct MFA program. He was a visiting um, writer or lecturer. And so I had told him about this literary journal. We became acquainted at that time um, very briefly um, because he was surprised that anybody even had a copy of this. Um, years later, uh, as I was preparing to write, um, as I was preparing to publish uh, my book, Swimming in Hong Kong, I decided to email Sean Wong and I asked him for a blurb and he was very generous and he gave a very nice blurb for my book. And um, I really reflected upon this and this idea of how, you know, I just happened to be living in this apartment at the time. And um, my landlord was the businessman for this literary journal and how this literary journal um, with these Asian American writers, and it, this is a picture of the cinematographer, James Wong Ho, um, made its way, you know, all the way to Hong Kong and back, how uh, it resulted in me being able to be acquainted with Sean Wong and getting a blurb for my book, how it, it sits here in my place here in Honolulu, um, and what it means for it to still be in existence. This was published in 1974 and still having a kind of influence on people's lives and the trajectory and, and how they perceive words and how they perceive selves. It was very important to me to know that there was this literary journal out there that as an Asian American writer, 
I wasn't the only one. There were other people that were ahead of me and were, were writing and changing the narrative of how we might think of ourselves. So whenever you're writing and you feel like you're not really sure if your words have meaning, or let's say you're, you write and your, your work is published in a small journal and you're not really, you don't even know if it's gonna make a difference, know that you never, you can never anticipate who it will affect and where the words will travel. And this really is the magic of writing. It's this idea that we can communicate across time and that the words will resonate beyond beyond what we can imagine and they will have power and they will have meaning and so with that i hope that little story might inspire you to keep on writing and to know that um, your writing is important um, writing is a way we heal it's a way we create ourselves into being. It's a way that we assert that we were here. And so please write uh, for more little stories, tips, ideas on reading and writing, health and wellness. Please subscribe to my Substack newsletter at drstephaniehan.com where I also hope to see you in class. And please subscribe and hit this YouTube channel and I will speak to you soon. Cheers.